So we celebrated our seventh wedding anniversary at the end of last month. So we thought we would sit down and chat about seven years married. Welcome to our channel. We are Let's See the World. I am Steph. I'm Katie. This is little Theo if he feels like saying hi. Theo's napping <laughs> on my lap. Um, he's not into it today, but maybe he'll make an appearance. Oh, I'm surprised. Um, but yes, welcome if you are new here and if you have watched our videos before, welcome back. Um, today, yeah, we thought we would chat about our wedding anniversary, which we celebrated at the end of December, seven years. I cannot believe it's been seven years. I know. Um, yeah, I mean, the last three years of the pandemic have um, been like half our married yeah, life. Yeah, which is weird to think of, but yeah. also totally makes sense. Um, yeah, so seven years, and yeah. we obviously love being married, so that's good. <laughs> yeah, we've been, <laughs> that's good. We've been married for longer than we've not been married. Really? Well, last year would have been too, because we got yeah, married around like, like five and a half mark. mark now. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I think the fact that half of our married life has been pandemic times is yeah. also very strange, but mm -hmm. yeah, I think in general we're enjoying it. Yeah, we spend a lot of time together. I mean, we spent a lot of time together before the pandemic too, so for a lot of couples, I know that like pandemic time forced them into yeah. close proximity 24-7. And we were like, yeah, welcome to the club. Yeah, um, we, yeah. We, we, did, we did this <laughs> forever. We did this voluntarily before. Well, especially um, traveling together. Yeah. And you are just together all the time. And, yeah. Yeah, but I think that dynamic works for us. Yeah. yeah. That being said, we did have a tough year. If you've seen some of our previous videos from the end of the year, you'll know yeah. that 2022 was not our best. Um, and we definitely yeah we had some harder times and yeah. struggled a little bit and um so we want to talk a little bit about that but then yeah. also some of our fun plans for what we think might be good um to do moving forward yeah i think obviously we never want to pretend like marriage is perfect and easy and that everything is always you know perfect because it's not and i think yeah being able to open up and talk about the fact that this past year i think was definitely the hardest year of our marriage so far yeah um which you know that's gonna happen there are gonna be you know good easy years and there are gonna be difficult years where you struggle and i think that's all just a part of it and part of getting married and committing to a life together is knowing that it's not always going to be easy and that we're gonna go through tough times but that we kind of do that together and we weather the storm and all of that and yeah this year was this past year was just a really hard one and i think getting to the end of it it gave us some time to reflect on like you know all of the stress in our personal life and our work life like the damage it kind of did to our relationship and mm -hmm. just being able to have like really open and on honest conversations with one another about like yeah how we were feeling and how like disconnected we were feeling and like just the toll it kind of took like on our marriage yeah because i think anyone who's been in a long-term relationship or marriage will tell you that it is work it's not yeah. just a given you don't just like say your vows and then live happily ever after even though that is <laughs> what is taught to us when we were young yeah um it is work it is ongoing it's um things change throughout your relationship throughout your lives yeah um and you have to adapt you have to continue to communicate and mm -hmm. prioritize and one of the biggest reasons why last year was so hard was because it was just hard in general yeah and so we were spending so much time working we were literally working nonstop. Well, not literally, but you know what I mean. Um, no, literally, <laughs> literally working nonstop. But the thing with the thing about us working together is that we, because we were working all the time, we were always basically like business, business partners. Business. Yeah. And so we didn't have any time, and we didn't make any time. Yeah. For our like designated relationship time and just like quality yeah. time. And I think that's important because you do have to make the time. Like, yeah. we talk a lot about like spending time together versus quality time yeah. because we can be both home all day, working, doing our various things, and like be around each other, spending time together. But, like, but coexisting. We're yeah, not that's different than like quality time that's intentional. Yeah. And like, there just wasn't any of that. Yeah, there was just no time for that, no room for that. Yeah, and of all. course, because we were so busy with work, we were quite stressed. Yeah. And so we were both kind of operating from a place of like high stress, just like 
keep our heads above water and do what was necessary to you know get our documentary done um, keep up with all the work stuff you know navigate the ever-changing <laughs> covid pandemic um yeah uh, life <laughs> you know and i mean that's on top of two other years of also operating from like survival mode because True. really we've all kind of been operating in survival mode the pandemic has been hard for mm -hmm. everyone in lots of different ways and i think i mean our life changed so much in 2020 yeah. and i don't think we've really like reflected on or acknowledged like just how much it's changed and yeah being stuck at home and like our work completely changing just our lifestyle completely changing like it has been hard and i do think we've both kind of tried to push through as best we can but yeah. we haven't really been operating from like our normal baseline happiness yeah. level that we would have been like yeah pre 2020 true. and so this year on top of those two years it all just kind of like stacked up to be really really difficult yeah I think it's important to note that, you know, something that we easily could have done is just kind of kept going and ignored um, the issues that have that came up. Um, yeah, I, I think it's really easy to just kind of have it be your new normal where you just stop talking about things. But mm. at the end of last year, we really made a point to sit down and discuss um, the past year and what made it hard and how we we did kind of get into this like new groove of basically just coexisting as business partners and like you know there we didn't feel as close as a couple mm -hmm. um as we had previously but yeah it was something that was really important for us you know both to to fix and to work on and so you know we had those conversations um Sometimes those conversations aren't always easy, but it's important to open up and yeah. to <laughs> talk about. I know for me especially, <laughs> I, you know, especially when I'm busy um, and feeling overwhelmed, I tend to just like have a bit of tunnel vision on the task at hand and and try not to let those pesky emotions get in my way. Um, <laughs> But they are important and are important. it's important to be. not only communicate them with your partner, but also like allow yourself to feel them. Yeah. So step one was kind of allowing myself to feel those emotions and kind of figure out where I was at. And then step two was obviously communicate with Katie. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, so we did sit down and we had some really great conversations. Yeah, we did. And um, they were very productive and we kind of left those with a bit of a game plan uh, for moving forward into this year. Yeah, yeah, I think it's important to note that those conversations can be hard and you're right, it is easy, well not easy, but in some ways I think it is easy to just kind of blow by them and- I think it's common. You, yeah, common, mm -hmm. I should say, yeah. As you say, to like just have this be a new normal. And like, I can really see now how <laughs> when couples go through difficult things or have, you know, a difficult year, how it does create so many sort of fractures in the relationship and that if you don't take the time to repair them or if you don't have the time i should say too to repair them um because lots of couples you know they could be going through a year like we had for like years on end yeah. you know raising children and having like career stress and so many things um there isn't always time to slow down and and try and put that effort back in and i'm i think we're fortunate to have the opportunity now to spend time focusing on our relationship. It's really important to us. Our marriage is like such an important part of our life and it's all connected to our work and like everything is interconnected and when one thing isn't working, nothing is working. And so, yeah, it became a big goal of ours to just like be intentional about putting that time into work on things. And I'm really glad that we have the time to do yeah. that. And I'm really glad that we're both on board to do that. Um, so yeah, we came up with a bit of a game plan, which we'll share with you because I think lots of couples could probably benefit from doing yeah. these things. And I think, you know, even if you're, you feel like you're in a good place and everything's working well, like it never hurts to just put that extra effort in so you can feel even more connected to your partner. Okay. So I'll give you, um, what Katie came up with, which I'm definitely on board with. <laughs> don't get me wrong, but it was very much a Katie idea. Um, mm -hmm. and I think it's great. Uh, so something that we are doing weekly in the new year now is um, a little check-in. Every week on Sunday, we will sit down and we'll have a little check-in, um, you know, just about how we're feeling and what the last week looked like, you know, what felt hard or what felt easy or what felt good. Yeah. Um, I think doing it in a way that is kind of scheduled out is nice because 
a lot of the time those check-ins can come up when you're heated or like when something comes up or when an issue arises and so or when one person's not in the headspace to have that yeah. conversation yeah so knowing that this is kind of like a safe space where mm -hmm. we can just talk about things we're both prepared going in yeah. you know we're not getting kind of blindsided by the other person with like, how are you feeling right now? Um, <laughs> are you speaking for me? No. <laughs> Steph doesn't love checking in about her feelings, but that's why I think this works yeah. well. Because I can it's, mentally prepare going it's intentional. in. intentional. Yeah. yeah, and then I kind of save it all for that conversation. Yeah. And I think it works well. It's only been a few weeks, but just setting aside that time to just have it be about us and how we're functioning as a couple. And we can just open up to one another about how we're feeling or if there were any tensions that arose through the week, um, it can be a good time to bring those things up because like you said, we're both like ready to have that conversation, like in the headspace to have that conversation. And that's the intention of talking about yeah. it. And I think that's really important. It's yeah, it's made a big difference already. And I just feel like we're more connected and we're more open with one another about how we're doing. You've been yeah. so much more open. It's yeah, it's been I'm trying. <laughs> The other thing we've been doing, this is more Seth's idea, but I also love it, um, is because we really just didn't feel like we had any intentional like quality time together last year. I mean, I shouldn't say any, but like yeah. really not a lot, not as much as we would normally have. Um, so something we've been implementing is every week just doing like a date night or a date day, um, and we take turns planning it. So it's just like intentional quality time that we spend together. I think that because of what we do for work, like so much of the time we spend together, especially like going out and doing fun things, it is always work related. Yeah. So there isn't a lot of time that we get to spend that's like intentional, like date time that's just for us. And especially last year because we were just so busy and the time we did have was all kind of work time. Like there was just nothing left that was like just ours. Yeah. And now that we do have more time, I think that's, that's been something that's made a really big difference as well. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I've been really loving the date time because it feels very intentional. And of course that is my word of the year, so perfect. Um, and yeah, it's just nice to kind of have time that is just for us. Yeah. And I really feel like we needed that last year mm -hmm. and we either didn't have the time or capacity to add that in, but you know, Making sure that we're intentional about it this year, I think will really go a long way. And it'll also yeah. just, I think it will help with our work as well because it will feel like we've kind of separated the two a little bit more than we have in the past. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I definitely think that that's gonna be a positive for the year. Yeah, I think that's something that honestly all couples would benefit from doing and it doesn't have to be anything like extravagant or expensive. It's not always like, you know, going out for dinner or something like that. It can just be something intentional that you go do together, whether it's like going for a walk or a hike together, or even just like staying home and one of one of you making the other one dinner or having a movie night together or whatever it is, but it's just about intentional quality time together where like phones are gone. Yeah. You're not talking about work, which for us is hard because we work <laughs> together, but just being really intentional about like quality time together as a couple. Um, I think all couples would benefit from that and however much time you have, maybe it's not every week, maybe it's every month or whatever it is, whatever capacity you have, I think it's important to continue like dating your partner, yeah. dating your spouse and making sure that you set that time aside because yeah, once you get married, like you just have so many responsibilities in life and there's so much going on and you know, for couples who have kids and like there's just so much happening all the time, like that's kind of the first thing to go, as you say, like yeah. the first thing to slip and it's important to not let it, I think. And we're obviously really lucky because we do have a lot of time together mm -hmm. and you know, we don't have kids, but for some people, you know, they might work opposite schedules and yeah. like they have, you know, um, a child to care for and they might rarely cross paths. Totally. So even more important in those yeah. situations to um, to make that time and to be intentional about spending yeah. quality time together. Otherwise, it's just like a drive-by relationship. Yeah, and totally. And there are phases of life where I'm sure that is all you can manage. Yeah, yeah. Um, last year, that was all we could manage. And yeah. yeah, for some people, that could probably go on for years. But if you do have the time, if you do have the capacity, I feel like implementing that is just like an easy thing that really makes a big difference. Um, that's what we found so far. Yeah, and I like what you said about phones away. I think yeah. that is such a simple way of doing it. You know, yeah. even if it's just like you're having dinner at home together and you just say, you know what, let's just have our phones away for the next hour and just be present yeah. and have a conversation. 
Um, I mean, I, I personally like that even when just spending time with friends or family. Yeah. It's so easy to just everyone on their phones, like ignoring each other, being with each other, but ignoring each other. Um, yeah. Yeah, you are big is on a, that. Is a common a common thing, and yeah, um, yeah, I I love to try in a nice way to just say, can we all put our phones away? Yeah, and like we get it, like we're glued to our phones yeah. too because of work, and it can be really hard. But sometimes, yeah, you do just have to put it aside and be like, even if it's just for an yeah. hour, thirty minutes, whatever it is, to be present. Yeah, so those are the things that we are currently working on. Um, I think you know our intentions for this year for twenty twenty three. One of the big ones, like we have personal goals, but one of our big goals together is just to really reprioritize our relationship and our marriage and make sure that all the plans we're making this year, any decisions we're making this year, everything kind of supports that overall goal of making sure that like we come first and our little family comes first and that we focus on us and our marriage and get it back where it was, like get it back to feeling strong because last year was really tough and we know now the things that made it tough and so we can avoid getting back to that place and avoid putting ourselves in that same position again. Yeah, I mean, ultimately we've always loved spending all this time together and like I said, we did it voluntarily before the pandemic and yeah. we will continue <laughs> doing that, yeah. um, you know, coming out of it. And one of the things we've realized is that when we have intentional time, you know, for our relationship, not only are we as individuals happier and we're happier in our relationship, we're also more productive when it comes to work yeah. and we work better together yeah. and, you know, everything is better. That's so yeah. taking that bit of time sometimes may seem like you don't have the time to spare, but if it's going to help in other areas or make things feel a little bit easier, That's so true. then often that is time well spent. Yeah. Um, so it's yeah. the same thing for just like regular self care, right? It's easy totally. to be like, I don't have 10 minutes to, you know, do a meditation or do a little workout or take some time for myself or have a relaxing bath. Like I don't have time to do that, but it's yeah. like, if you don't have time to do that, <laughs> there's a problem. And if you took the time to do that, it would make everything else so much easier. Yeah, right? because then you're going to get to sleep that. better. You're going to have yeah. more, you know, high quality sleep. And then if you're eating be better, you'll have more you'll, energy. Exactly. You'll be able to get up earlier. All these it's things. All it's all connected. It's all connected. Yeah. And that's definitely something we realized last year. And, and we felt the effects of that. We yeah. felt how hard everything else was because yeah. there was, you know, at moments tension between us and... You know, that's never fun, and no. so if we can kind and of... And it does make everything suffer. Yeah. yeah, and if we can really pay attention to our relationship and put in the work, then yeah. everything else is going to feel a lot better. Yeah. So, too. so I think that's it for today. We would love to hear from all of you if you have any ideas or maybe you've been through something similar uh, with your partner. We would love to hear it. Uh, leave any suggestions in the comments, too, so other people can read them because... I mean, anyone who's in a long-term relationship or a marriage, I think, has probably gone through something similar and can probably relate. Um, and that's important, too, I think, to just talk about the fact that times can get tough sometimes and marriage can be tough um, and just be open about that and know that you're not alone in it. So, yeah. yeah. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. <laughs>